you're still gonna learn a lot from simply playing. If you take those experiences into your body, if that makes sense, right? Like, it's super important. I can't stress enough the lab work, but I've seen a lot of really good players go by without intense lab work. Now you add the lab work afterwards, and then even discussions. Discussions aren't necessarily lab work. They technically are, but since you're not in practice mode, you're not necessarily labbing. You're talking about the game, and that will, what do you call this? Change your perspective, or open up new things for you to lab or test in game, or at the lab. Like, okay, let's say uh, someone tells you, if you leave the frames in the air, your opponent reacts differently and you have more openings. You're like, wait a minute, but that's not frame trapping, right? Because I'm giving up my frames. And you're not, you don't fully understand it yet. You get what he told you, but you don't get it because it doesn't, see, it doesn't feel as effective based on, again, the experiences you have playing the game, right? So you set out to start doing it. So you experiment in practice mode. If I leave this plus seven, what can the opponent do, if, let's say, if I delay for a half second? What can I do, right, if that happens? And then you bring that to the game. And then you notice, you check how certain opponents react to this, uh, that, that exact situation. And you'll be like, ah, oh, okay, okay, okay. So sometimes it might go well for you, and sometimes it doesn't go well for you. You're always gonna find an opponent who's eventually just gonna stop there and be like, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna wait, you know? And then sometimes, you, you, let's say you hear someone who says, oh, waiting's better than, what do you call that? Uh, attempting to initiate offense, or like trying to change the pace, because you're just waiting for your opponent and you're just here and there. And you're like, oh yeah, that sounds okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there, are there any downsides to it? Uh, yes, there are, there are plenty. <laughs> But it's like connecting the knowledge. Ooh, 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 ooh. Connecting the knowledge and the experience together is the main thing. And depending on how you learn, one is gonna be stronger than the other. Like you're gonna be more influenced by this thing over that thing. So like even if let's say you're more on the the knowledge side, like if someone tells you, hey, really, really big, and playing the game is the one that really connects it all together. So if you're losing mainly because you don't know the matchup, it's because you need to do the lab work. Or you need to experience playing against the matchup more and more. Right? One of those two things. Air hey, Travis has a pretty good explanation here. He's sharing his experiences. So mainly what I always say is that you take information from all places and then just test everything. Whether you agree with it or not. And with Tekken, you have the liberty and ability to test all this stuff. It's not something that's out of your reach in terms of testing. Great. That's the Huarang matchup. <laughs> yes, hello Christian, welcome. It's been a hot minute since you've seen me live. Well, welcome to the Cheese Dojang, the 44th edition. Where we're playing the 4th set. 4th? 5th, 5th, 5th set. Of the cheese dojang. Mr. Super Pilot here has gotten a lead 0-1 in this Huarang mirror. I'm trying to get something to work. I believe I've already gotten kind of tired of the set against Ethan. Like the adrenaline just went all the way. Shoo, it skyrocketed and now it's just crashing. So I'm just trying to figure out how to play right now. It's not as bad as Jin, like in the road to blue cheese where I attempt to get him to Fujin, and I'm hard stuck in Suzaku right now. Oops. But it's gonna be different for Horan because I've experienced a lot of these things already, and I've gone through the lab work and done a bunch of theory crafting and discussed this particular situation with a lot of players in order to create my own and what I would actually apply when I play the game. So that's very, very important. So yeah, play, play the game. And then after that, figure out what kind of player you are, how do you learn best, and then discuss with other players to get more and more of an open perspective. Ouch.
that's unoptimal. It's not exactly the respawn I'd recommend. He came here like nine months ago. <laughs> it's all good, man. I mean, I have also trouble like remembering players. Emmy loves cheese because there's so many players who come, come by to the cheese do jam. What I remember the most are like the regulars. But all those who, what do you call that? Even if you came from like nine months ago, it's okay. It's all good. I don't mind. You you can come and go. It's all good. It's all good, man. Sometimes you're feeling Tekken, sometimes you're not, right? That's, that's how it is. Oopsie. Stop. Oh, shucks. That's okay. I'm alive. Whoa, did I just double sidestep an RFF? Oh, nice. Nice. Oh, when you first started Tekken. How has it been? Nine months afterwards. Oh and two, wait! I'm in the same I'm in the same scenario again. <laughs> so even at high level, I don't even know certain matchups. I know the general gist of the matchup, but like super specialist or like super specific, like not really. And there's always certain stuff that I can't lab because I can't do their stuff. So that, that puts you at a disadvantage. That's why you need other players. Oh, nice punish. No, it's okay. Even if you're playing Julia, dude, I can't play Julia <laughs> at all. I can't. Top tier or not, if you just start, the, you know, you should be proud of like, give yourself a, pat yourself in the back for getting that far within nine months. I know, I know some other players who just take years to, you know, develop. I remember I trained one personally and once he's got it, when he, when he got over the hump, dude, it was, we were going crazy. We were both going crazy. I was really happy for him. You should be happy for yourself. Like, if no one's there, you should be happy for yourself. You have to pat yourself on the back. Regardless of the character you're playing. Like, even if you say you play Fa'ak Lee, I don't... Don't really mind. Game's hard, man. <laughs> of course, it's less hard on certain characters, but still. If you meet a, a player who's just... Too good for you. Then it doesn't matter what character you're playing. Ouchie. Stapu. Salamat. Oh, I didn't catch that. Oh, all the more if you came from another fighting game. <laughs> Share the same cheese. Oh, that's not. Oh, it's beautiful. So you can avoid moves, actually, and then there's tracking and all that kind of stuff. Round one. So it, it like it, it it adds more layers of stuff you need to learn, right? Because for me, in 2Ds, I struggle doing combos, man. Like, you see, I can do combos fine here, but I can't do combos in 2D. No, no, no. I can't do loops. And I have teammates, friends, who are like, dude, this is easy. Considering your ex level of execution, you should be able to do it. But I can't do it. So I struggle with that. So when I accomplish it, I'm going to go crazy when I go up, when I accomplish it. Round two. Fight. Dude, I can't play the game anymore. So I can't play, like if I left the 2D game already, I left. I'll play the game a little bit, like maybe once or twice when rollback's there, but that's about it. Like I have no plans to come back there. It's like Melty Blood, I'm not playing it anymore. After what happened in the first cheese special, I was just like, nah. I can't play the game anymore, it's quite obvious. Because I heavily rely, just like in Tekken. I guess in Tekken it's a little bit different, because I have all the knowledge and all the stuff, blah blah blah. But in, in those games, I don't have it. So I rely heavily on the way I view the game, simplifying it and all that, using, you know, my you know, adapting as much as possible, and focusing on neutral and defense and throw, and throw teching. Because I throw teching is not that hard to me in, let's say, BB tag. Not as. But of course, for some players, you know, like throws are they're pretty big well. too. How do you fight and talk at the same time? That's also experience. You just you just keep doing it, and then eventually, uh, you you can do it. Like you don't have to be high level to do it. Ooh. Is there people lined up? There's like one more. I probably do that as the last one. If the connection doesn't pan out with Zach, 
we can run it. But if it does pan out, that's the last set I'll do. So there's like one person after Super Pilot already. You know, if you want to reserve a slot, just let me know if you want to reserve a slot. So that next time, all you gotta do is just drop by. And then I'll just squeeze you in the, the lineup. Oopsie. It also helps that I'm playing on my main. So, ooh, it's dropping left and right sometimes. Oh no, it's going to three. Don't, don't do it, don't do it. Because if I like to say, like when I was playing on Jin, if you were here for Road to Blue Cheese, the second one, I played like, dare I say garbage, which is true. My Jin was really, really bad that time. It was nothing like the first Road to Blue Cheese. And I settled for just playing extremely basic. Because that's the most I could do at that moment. So it's different, like when you acquire a certain. Like if you want to add the win, pa, right? But if you're just talking about playing while talking, that can just be acquired uh, with enough practice. Like you can just talk to yourself. <laughs> like if you want to say your thoughts out loud, even if you're not on stream. Like that's one way to practice it without. If you're afraid of like annoying someone, you could do it like that. Wow, there's no choice. Or you attempt. They even happened in the first set, right? Fight. Oh, that's plus five. But as you can see, I've come prepared for. <laughs> for these type of connections. Season one and season two have trained me well. <laughs> Delay based net code. But I'd say the lag's a little bit different, even with like the rollback that's in place. Sometimes I'm like, wait a minute, this feels a little bit heavier. <laughs> Sometimes. Oh, oh no. The LFS of forward four, the negative 14 launcher. One of four angs faster, low crushes in left flamingo. Nice. Oh, wow. Great read. Round three. Great read, great read, great read. Fight. Bloody guillotine. I am the true Brian Fury. <laughs> oh, Abbott. Plus six, plus seven, zero. Yeah, in a power crush, you can't. Uh, what do you call it? Break throws. Oh, that's not guaranteed anymore. They removed it, they removed all Oki. Because it, they had to give it a guaranteed right plasma blade. I don't know why. They couldn't have retained the Oki they gave it back before. You're like, goodbye, Oki. That's why the only Oki you can do is like a jumping Oki. Or just turn around and be an RFF. Ay, nako, that was plus 9. Plus 8. Negative 4. Plus 8. 14. One launch would do it, right? Yeah, it would. One launch would do it. I would play a set, one launch would have done. And then I would stand up immediately. So like, I don't sit down for a long time. Like after I play one long set, or like two to three short sets, I'm like, okay, I'm done. So even if someone was lined up to play, I was like, no, 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 no. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. When, after, after my break. Because <laughs> it's important. You gotta take care of your body. Oopsie. And you can use that time to like chat with all the other players, even from those from different fighting games. It's great. Mmm, that's a lock. Alright, Zach is already preparing. Let's hope our, uh, the ISP gods are in our favor this time around. Beautiful Punisher from Super Pilot 16, Tekken 7. That's what they say, punishment is a big portion of it. Strike-based punishment. You want to know what DOA's punishment is? It's grab-based punishment. That's why it threw me off when I went there. When I played it, I was like, wait a minute. It's grab based, not not strike based. Oh, okay. Round three. Fight. And so like if they do a low, <laughs> you have to do a you have to do what King does. You have to do a crouching grab. Because King and Armor King and Marduk has that, right? And the only time I remember seeing someone fully do that against lows was one of Nee's sets against Nobi. 
wherein every time his opponent did a low, knee would just do the crouching grab, and it never got it never gets you know teched. You can still tech it, those stuff. But you know it comes off as a surprise, and you just you just let it go, and it hurts. It hurts a lot. Like that's more than an actual while standing punishment, Ata. It'd be equal to like Leo's while standing for one plus two. Okay. Mm, drop. Splat. Oh, nice. We get that guy. Never mind. Oh, sayang. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't splat, so I could still get something. Oh no, the cheese keeper. Here you go, beautiful. Oh, combo video. Thirty-two seconds left on the plot. Oh, he didn't go for the super hunting hawk. The plus four. Here you go. We're just checking with the DF ones. Mid checks. He blocked that. Plus seven. Negative ten. It went all in. And if that did go in, it would have been de dead. Good games to Super Pilot Sixteen. Good games. Four three versus four four. To me. It's all about what you want. What do you prefer? Do you want 27 damage? You want lesser damage for more frames? One additional frames? And you want to be in RFF immediately? Or do you want to remain in LFF? Take three more damage and one frame less. And keep your options more open. Because you have access to everything from LFF. While in RFF, you're restricted to mostly RFF moves with a couple of LFF moves.